Hello everyone. A warm welcome to you all. I'm so glad you could join me today. My name is Ingrid Kalberg Benz. I was born and raised in Sweden. And today we're going to learn about Elsa Beskov, who was also from Sweden. Elsa Beskov was a Swedish children's book author and illustrator. She's often called the Beatrix Potter of Scandinavia. Elsa Beskov wrote many, many wonderful children's books. For instance, Peter in Blueberry Land, The Children of the Forest, The Children of Hat Cottage, The Flower Festival, The Curious Fish, <laughs> Ulles Ski Trip, and Aunt Green, Aunt Brown, and Aunt Lavender, and many, many more. As you can see, I have quite a collection. <laughs> and it's a bit worn because these books have been with me for a very long time. Children in Sweden and all over the world have grown up with Elsa Beskov's books for over 100 years. And I used to love reading these books when I was a kid. <laughs> in my family, we used to go for long walks in the forest when we weren't in school, of course. And I used to pretend that I was all those characters in the Elsa Beskov books. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Recently, I got to travel to Sweden, my and Elsa Beskov's home country. And in the south of Sweden, there's a town called Lund. And in Lund, there's a museum called Kulturam. And at this museum, there's currently an exhibition for children based on Elsa Beskov's fairy tales. Let's go and take a look. Here I am in Lundagård, a park in the center of Lund, Sweden. It's kind of cold, but some people are having a spring picnic. I'm on my way to Kultur. Kultur, spoon for day. So I'm gonna hop on my bike and I'll meet you there. It looks like there's nobody else in there. Maybe I'm all by myself. Exciting. This is where Tante Gredeline lives. Aunt Purple. And here they are. Aunt Purple, Aunt Brown, and Aunt Green. Well, let's see what it says here. And these are her buckets and her watering cans. Yeah. And look at this wall with all the flowers. And look, here's Sul Egg. The sun egg. And there you can sit and read the book if you want. And if we continue this way, we'll get to Glada Grodan Servering. Obs, for beauty to yesterday at the Upvarada. The happy frogs. Little cafe. And it says, note, it's prohibited for the guests to eat each other. <laughs> and there they are. That was a fun exhibition. And now I'm back outside. I think I'm going to look around a little bit more maybe take a peek in one of these old houses. 
Elsa grew up with fairy tales all around her. She started telling stories herself even before she could speak properly. She would tell stories to her older brother Hans and he would help her find the right words, come up with suggestions for the plot, etc. Elsa's maternal grandmother, Murmu Johanna, had taught her the old nursery rhyme, The Little Old Woman, which inspired Elsa to write her very first book, The Tale of the Little, Little Old Woman, which was published in 1897. That is over a hundred years ago. As a child, Elsa Beskov would spend hours and hours drawing trees and plants and flowers. Her siblings gave her a nickname. They called her Princess. And Elsa became very knowledgeable. She knew lots and lots about plants and flowers. And her illustrations, her drawings, were very detailed and lifelike and still very imaginative. Even as an adult, Elsa still had a child's pure and wondrous view of nature. We will now take a sneak peek at this classic Elsa Besko picture book, Sul Egget, which was published in 1932 in Swedish. The Sun Egg by Elsa Beskov. There once was a small elf who lived in a hollow tree in the woods. She loved dancing. In the spring, she danced a welcome back, son, dance. In the autumn, she danced a swirling yellow leaves dance. And in the winter, a falling snow dance. She would dance until she was so tired that she would crawl into her tree and fall asleep. In the summer, there was so much happening and so many interesting, funny things to watch that the elf didn't have so much time for dancing. All the birds in the woods were her friends. If she saw an egg that had fallen out of its nest lying on the moss, she would carry it up to the mother bird as quickly as she could. The birds were all very fond of her and they sang their most beautiful songs whenever she was near. One day, when she was exploring in the woods, the elf saw something large, round, and orange lying on the ground. What a big egg, she thought. Where has it come from, I wonder? She looked up and saw a bright hole in the clouds overhead. I know, she said. The sun has dropped an egg and she can't see it because the clouds are in the way. And the little elf ran off straight away to tell her friends all about it. That was the beginning of the story of the sun egg. And as you just learned, the story is about a little red-haired elf convinced that the egg she has found has fallen from the sky and that it belongs to the sun. She gathers all her friends around the egg and then things start to happen, which eventually takes her on a very unexpected journey south. Like many of Elsa Beskov's books, this one is a magical celebration of the outdoors and the beauty of nature. It's a wonderful book to read any time of year because it follows all the seasons. And the illustrations, aren't they beautiful? <laughs> I'm sure you'll have fun guessing what the sun egg really is. And I'm quite sure that you'll figure it out before the elf and her friends do. <laughs> So now you know a little bit about the sun egg and you can finish the story at home. But now it's time for us to do some fun activities.
first. Let's imagine the sun egg falling from the sky and landing in the middle of the forest on thick green moss surrounded by large pine and spruce trees. How did this orange egg end up there? Do you know what it is? Can you name it? I want you to imagine we're in a Nordic forest. It's been a long, cold, dark winter, and spring is finally here, and the sun is shining again. Our little elf is dancing her welcome back sun dance. What kind of movement do you think she would use? What kind of movement would you use? Spring awakening. What does that feel like? And create your own dance. Maybe our elf is moving her head really fast. Or maybe she's moving her head really slowly. Maybe the movement starts from her shoulder and moves out her arm to her hand. Maybe she's climbing up and reaching for the sun. Maybe she's using both hands in a spirally motion that tilts her head up to the sun. Maybe she's using her whole body. Maybe she's moving really fast. Or maybe she is moving really slowly. You can dance to music or without, or you can sing. Create your own dance. Many Elsa Beskov books follow tiny little creatures living in the forest. Some wear nutshells as hats or mushrooms as caps. The scale in the sun egg is fun to imagine. Think about our little elf. She's so tiny. She's barely the size of a lingonberry plant. And she's so small that she can hide inside the hollow of a tree trunk. Now, Let's imagine things from your home landing in the middle of the forest. A pair of scissors, or, or, or a fork, or a shoe. How would an elf or a gnome look at those things? What would they think they were? How would they use them? <laughs> Pick a couple of things from home and imagine how the elves and gnomes would use them. Draw or paint a picture. Would a shoe become a perfect house? A fork? A rake? Maybe a, a bowl would be a perfect fairy bathtub. Anything you can imagine. We would love to see what you create. So please, please do share with us on social media. But remember to tag us using hashtag ScanHouse. Today, when this video is premiered, we're celebrating the weekend of Valborg and May 1st in Sweden. Choral singing is a very popular pastime in Sweden. And on Valborg and May 1st, almost every choir in the country is busy singing traditional Swedish spring songs. On Valborg's Messoafton, Valpurgis Eve in English, some people gather in their villages and neighborhoods and light large bonfires everyone is celebrating that spring is finally here. So I'd like to wish you a lovely Valborg, Glad Valborg, have a wonderful May 1st, happy spring, and I hope to see you soon. Bye!